Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I'm going to talk about using OVM within System C. So of course I'm referring to the open verification methodology for System Verilog. System Verilog is the native language for OVM. However, Cadence have donated OVM ML to the OVM community, where ML stands for mixed language. You can grab the source code of OVM ML from the ovmworld.org website, where it's available under the Apache Open Source license. The idea of OVM ML is to support mixed language OVM environments where you have a native system Verilog verification environment, and from that environment make use of individual verification components written in System Verilog, in System C, or in E. Communication in OVM ML is handled by using the OSCE TLM1 standard, which happens to be the communication standard that's used within OVM itself. So we can pass transactions between System Verilog, System C and E using TLM1 method calls within the OVM ML framework. A System Verilog verification environment would typically make use of reusable verification components such as sequencers, drivers, monitors, checkers and scoreboards that may all be written in the native System Verilog language. On the other hand, you may sometimes want to reuse verification components written in other languages, such as EVCs or System C reference models. And that's just what OVMML allows you to do. So let's have a look at an example of OVMSC in particular. This example is based exclusively on standards and open source code. So we start by including, including the standard System C header, then the standard TLM2 header, because this example makes use of the OSCE standard TLM2 library. And finally, we include the OVM ML header, which perhaps you could argue it's not strictly speaking a standard, is nonetheless publicly available under an open source license. So I'll start by emphasising the mix and match nature of this example. The example is written in System C. Our producer is a System C module. Within that System C module, we're making use of features from the OVMSC library, that is, features imported from OVM, and also making direct use of the OSCE TLM 2.0 standard. So this complete example will run using the OSCE open source simulator and using standard and open source libraries. Of course, if you want to make use of System Verilog and E, then you'll need an appropriate tool and license from your EDA vendor. But in this particular example, we're successfully running OVMSC code simply using open source libraries. So let's dive down into the detail. We'll start off by having a look at the producer. So the producer is derived from the class OVM component, which is a class from the OVM ML library. An OVM component is in turn derived from SC module. So this component is just a system C module in disguise. The component declares a TLM2 simple initiator socket. So this is standard code from the OSCE TLM2 library that will allow this component to communicate with other components using the TLM2 standard. Then comes the constructor and a macro OVM component utils, which adds some machinery to this OVM component that will later be used when we register this component with the factory. OVM component utils just mirrors the macro of the same name from the OVM library itself. Then comes end of elaboration. End of elaboration is kind of interesting because it's a callback that's common between the System C standard and the OVM standard. Both of those standards use the same name for this callback that's executed at the end of elaboration. The callback is making a call to get config int. And get config int interrogates, interrogates the OVM configuration table, which is a table of configuration parameters that could be set from the top down within the verification environment. Then comes the run method. So run is a standard callback within OVM and it represents the behaviour that's executed during simulation. The system C equivalent of this would just be an SC thread process. The run method is making a call to btransport, and this is a standard TLM 2.0 interface method call. 
So again, we're mixing and matching the standard calls using the TLM 2.0 library, using System C, and using OVMS seal within the same example. Then comes a call to OVM stop request. This is another OVM feature. You may remember that System C has a call SC stop, which will stop simulation either immediately or at the end of the delta cycle. OVM stop request does a little better than that by delaying the end of simulation until every component has had a chance to run and possibly drain out any transaction buffers. Then comes report. Report is another standard OVM callback. You may remember that there are actually three callbacks in OVM that are executed at the end of simulation, extract, check and report. So that gives you a little more fine-grained control than you can have using System C, which just has a single end of simulation callback. And following the component, we have the OVM component register macro, which actually registers this component with the OVM factory for factory automation. Now let's have a look at the top-level component within the OVM component hierarchy, which is another System C module. So this top-level component is going to instantiate the producer and the consumer, and it does so using the build method. So within System C, the module hierarchy gets instantiated by calling a constructor of a System C module from the constructor of a higher-level System C module. In OVM, the same thing is accomplished using the standard build callback. And in OVM, lower level components are typically instantiated not by calling their constructors directly, but by using the so-called factory pattern. This is a standard coding style within object-oriented programming that gives you a little bit more flexibility when instantiating objects, because we can actually override the type of component being created by this factory method call, create component, on the fly. So the idea is that you can write a fixed verification environment and then on the fly modify the types of the components being created from the test. So in this case, we create a producer and a consumer component by calling the factory method, and then bind together their sockets by calling the standard bind method of the TLM2 library. So the bind method being called on this slide is just straight out of the TLM2 standard. So I've talked quickly through an example of using OVMSC, and I've highlighted a number of the features of OVMSC which are listed here. So OVS, OVMSC supports the OVM component hierarchy using the OVM component class. It supports factory automation from OVM, that is using the OVM factory and the set type and set inst override methods. OVMSC supports the OVM configuration table mechanism, that is the set config and get config family of methods. Supports all the standard OVM phases and phase timeouts, such as the build, run and report methods. And finally, OVMSC supports TLM1 communication across language boundaries. So that's how it's possible to pass transactions between System Verilog, System C and E using OVMML. So if you want any more information, I work for Doulos and we deliver training classes. We can certainly offer you excellent training in System Verilog, OVM or System C. We also have a number of resources on the subject of System Verilog, System C and OVM available on the Doulos website. So check that out at www.doulos.com.